Welcome to the Mystery of Life. I'm Jo. And I'm Johnny. And today we're asking, what happened to the Titanic? Now, I know what you're going to say, all right? Yes, it sank, all right? But I would like to go deeper than that. There are a lot of conspiracy theories and like stuff that like may or may not have been true. So I just want to like address them and we're going to look at it. Maybe the question should have been, why did the Titanic sink? Well, we sort of know the answer to that too, don't we? Well, at least enough for there to be some sort of smart ass remark from you. <laughs> but before we begin, begin, I just want to say thank you to everyone that signed up to Patreon so far. Last week's episode was featuring the staircase case, uh, Kathleen Peterson and Michael Peterson. Uh, you will need to be a Patreon member to hear it. Uh, but this is for everyone. So we've got to rein in Johnny a little bit this week. Uh, the Titanic. What a ship. Um, I think everyone knows at least a bit about this ship, right? I mean, a few, few quick Hit an iceberg, facts. it sank and there was enough on that bit of wood for two people. <laughs> the, the bit of wood thing I'm actually not going to address. Or at least I wasn't going to address. It was only in the field. Exactly. But now that you've mentioned it, for there those of you that don't know. There was enough room on there that. There was enough room on that bit of wood. <laughs> um, and for those of you young enough to have never seen the film Titanic, Watch it and you'll see what we mean. Right. As you know, I found a bit of a newfound obsession with the sea and I'm generally fairly impressed by ships. That doesn't mean I want to get on one. It's my idea of a nightmare. I don't know why these people thought. I suppose in 1912, you had to, if you wanted to get to America, you went on a ship. Wait, what do you mean? I don't know why these people did it. <laughs> no, but like, I know it wasn't a cruise, but like my idea of a cruise is it wasn't a, hell. No, yeah, but it wasn't a cruise. It was a mode of transport. I know. Well, that's what it I just like said. I told you a had very to. large floaty bus. Yeah. Still. And there was no other option. There was no cheap, affordable passenger flight. Mm. It took more than $7 million to build. That would put it somewhere around the $166 million today. Yeah, Bel- Belfast, isn't it? Do you know what, though? I found a fun fact. It took $200 million to make the film Titanic. Well, yeah. So it cost more to make the film than it did to make the boat. <laughs> yeah. Like, even in considering inflation. Yeah, people's wages are a lot more on the film. It took about two years to build. Eight workers died during the building and it took thousands of workers to actually get it to the point where it could set sail or be launched. Love that about shit. The shipyard itself actually employed 15,000 people at the po- at the peak of its build, although they reckon only about 3,000 of these actually worked on the ship. Who knows? It took a lot. I mean, I'm pretty impressed by shipbuilding on the whole, even today. Well, it's just large-scale engineering is impressive. Yeah, sure. Build big things like bridges and shit. Yeah, it's kind of amazing though, isn't it, really? No one really thinks about it. You just get on the boat. Yeah, tiny little human, make big things. <laughs> it took 20 horses to transport the ship's main anchor. There's something I bet you didn't know. No. Why were they using horses? It would have been much easier to use a lorry. How stupid do you think I am? <laughs> I understand why they used horses to pull an anchor in sixteen tw- uh, in 1912. All right, but I think we have discussed before the difference between a boat and a ship because I constantly use the same word for, for either vessel. Oh, I'm not going into it again. You don't want to go into it again. Have I ever given an official answer because I Googled it this week? No, I don't think we ever did. Do you want to know? I'm sure, if we can put a, a final line through what <laughs> the difference between a boat and a ship and, ref, and I promise not mention it again. From now on, if I need to talk about it again, I'll just refer back to the Titanic no, no, episode. No, 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 no. That's just as long. I want to never mention it again. According to dictionary.com, in casual use, the word boat is often used to refer to any water-going vessel, regardless of its size or how it's powered. However, large ocean-faring watercraft, those that use multiple sails or engines, are properly called ships. So I was right, big ship, little boat. Um, Ocean-faring watercraft. I mean, come on, from now on, that's what we're calling things. (laughs) Anyway. They launched the Titanic into the water in Belfast in 1911, and it was like, you know, I pretty, said it was in Belfast. Deal. Did you? Yeah, you weren't listening, but it's, it's recorded. I've got evidence. I can, you know a lot of stuff. That's why I wanted to tell you the horse and the anchor thing. Because I could put it, I can actually put it on a loop on a button and just, just repeat me saying Why it. do you think I wouldn't believe you? She was massive. Sometimes I put you on a button. <laughs> Ship. She was massive. She weighed about 46,000 tonnes. Yeah, you're going to be big, isn't it? And she was just over 269 metres long. For reference, that's about two and a half football fields. That's English big, or American? It? And there's not a lot in it, to be fair. One's about 90 metres, one's about 100. People so. say that, like, it's easy to, like, for your brain to make it easier. But it's not. I'm, I can't. I don't. I that's can't. how I measure things. Like, if someone says to me, it's like how two the, metres, you, how, right? I think about how many of me can lay down. <laughs> so, yeah, but like, if someone says to me, like, that 
that that's this many football fields. I haven't got a fucking clue what a football field is. Okay, so I'm about let's say what nearly... have you got to do with it? Because that's how I measure things in my brain. If someone says to me it's like a hundred meters, I imagine how many of of something that I can fit in that space. I have to have something for scale. You use bigger <laughs> things. Yeah, at that level. But if someone says like like a room, for example, like a room that's maybe I don't like care about 10 this. Meters, I, I was tr- I was trying to make a point, but I think a lot of people get it. That's how I think that's how a lot of people. Not by themselves. Things. Not not by how many themselves fit in 100 metres. No, that's lunacy. Okay, so how do you imagine what 269 metres looks like? I, I can't because I'm not a fucking range finder. <laughs> but you can get the idea that by having I have, like, two yeah, or three yeah, football yeah. fields by next how, to each other is very much, long. By how much distance you have, in my head, there's like, there is close, far, further away. Okay, so what's the Titanic? Big? Yeah. Right, sure. She used about 825 tonnes of coal a day. Now, I don't know much about modern ships, but I imagine this would be an outrage now. What, are we diesel powered? We must be. I, I, We're not using coal that much, I know. Well, I'm not, pretty sure we're not diesel in the powered. developed world. But but this, imagine... this meant it was dumping 100 tonnes of ash in the sea every day. And therein lies the problem. That's how I know we're definitely not using coal. Well, no, but we didn't know any better, did we? No, ah, sure. Anyway, it sailed from Belfast to Southampton, but its actual maiden voyage would be from Southampton to New York. And on the 10th of April, 1912, it set sail from Southampton. Did they do the bottle and shit? No. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. No fanfare? Apparently. See, a lot of people say that that's a bit of a curse, that they oh. didn't... Well, that, that, <laughs> I mean, yeah, now, I think if you're not doing it, you're a fool after what happened to the Titanic. However, apparently White Star Line, the company that made the ship, just didn't do that on any of their ships. So... Even though some people think like it's a curse and now your ship's crashed, they actually didn't do it on any of their ships. No, you know. About 100,000 people gathered to watch it launch. Yeah, I remember I've seen one of those black and white videos where like there's like lines through it and stuff of people just frantically waiting yeah. <laughs> in silence. It was to go to France, then Ireland, and then all the way to New York. And um, That sounds a bit weird, but it actually makes sense. There's a little map on the blog this week. Yeah, we've been through this. Yeah, we have. <laughs> So just look at the little map. It does make sense. Got to go around the leg of in- of Britain. Pretty it's, much, yeah. It's pretty much in line with front. Like, it makes sense when you see the diagram. Exactly, yeah. That's why I've put it on, put it on the blog. It was designed to carry 3,547 passengers. However, there were 2,223 people aboard Titanic for her maiden voyage. This was 1,324 passengers and 908 crew. That's nearly a crew member per person. <laughs> well, yeah, but they're, they're not just like doing things for people. They're doing things like keep the yeah, boat running. And, I know. Like, it engineers just, it and does chefs seem like and... a lot though, doesn't it? Like on a plane, you've probably got like 200 people and like 12 crew. Well, yeah, but if you, combi- like, if you combined everyone at the airport. I suppose, yeah. That helps with the, f- there's a lot. There's a lot of people involved in all of them. It's just they're contained on the ship because they're not yeah. get, Can uh, you imagine if they'd allowed another 1,000 people on that ship? I was going to say, there's probably people that were like, oh, I'm so bummed I didn't get a ticket to the, on the Titanic. Oh, I wish I'd got the yeah. Titanic. And now and then, then they were like... Oh. Well, there was space available, but they were spenny. So a first-class ticket, and I'm not talking like a suite or anything, high-end, just your basic like first-class entry... Was How middle class pounds. do you sound? Just your basic first class. Just your entry. basic first class was thirty pounds. That's about four thousand dollars now, just to get on first class. Oh yeah, it was for rich people. We 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 all the know cheapest that. ticket you could buy, the very cheapest ticket it, it, down in steerage was four hundred, the equivalent of today's money, four hundred and thirty eight pounds. That's not yeah. bad, really, is it? I suppose to get all the way to New York by yeah. sea. Yeah, but I bet they didn't. God say, knows what a plane. I, I bet costs they didn't now. say. By the way, when we sink, we're going to lock you down here. Because I, I would have weighed uh, that up. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. I would have weighed that up and be like, oh, no, you know what? It's not worth the cheap cheap rates. I'm going to upgrade to first class because they're not going to get <laughs> locked in the hold. Yeah, but remember, nobody thought it was going to sink. So, like, not an issue. Well, yeah, but surely, like, these gates didn't lock themselves. Well, we'll come to that. Interestingly, they took 40,000 fresh eggs. Bacon and shit, innit? And 12,000 bottles of wine, most of which apparently they reckon are still down there, some of which might still be drinkable. Because there's no current and very low oxygen. I mean, that's great storage for wine. Yeah, it'll just be, it'll just be improving. Yeah. Uh, they also had 10,000 light bulbs and 44,000 pieces of cutlery. 
Yeah, it's going to have a lot of these things because it was massive. I know, I just thought those were interesting. But that is all the fun facts out of the way. Don't worry, I'm, I'm moving just saying, on now. That would, be, that would be a fun fact. It was really small. <laughs> I know, but I just think it's just mental to it's think that you're, you're not, taking 44,000 su- cutlery pieces It's not surprising <laughs> on a ship that size, but if you told me it was on a little tugboat, they've got 44,000 spoons in their <laughs> thing, we're like, wow, that's impressive. <laughs> all right, then, let's talk lifeboats and sinking. Not enough of them. Boat well, sunk. the idea that the ship was unsinkable wasn't entirely true. It was deemed practically unsinkable. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was direct. Con- it was. It had t- dual layered hull that could protect very well from impact. Yeah, basically. But the problem was it didn't. It, it didn't hit an iceberg like it, everyone imagines, like iceberg smash. If it hit an iceberg, it. Uh, well, whatever it hit, <laughs> scraped down the side of the boat. Yeah, penetrating both holes, allowing water to get in. Yeah, that's what they say. Um, I mean, the thing, the ship and its like marketing mostly boasted about its safety features. Is that what you say? So they didn't really say, get on this ship, it's unsinkable. They were more like, look at how safe our ship is. So they sort of went the opposite direction. The What you're talking about is um, basically they had doors, which is probably a bit more advanced than the word door, but like shutters to basically close off and compartmentalise itself so that even if it took significant damage, it would be able to stay afloat. It was four forward compartments that could flood entirely and the ship would still be okay. Basically, that it meant it would be able to stay afloat enough or travel enough to get help. But they could only be, they couldn't all be flooded. Uh, no, four could. Oh, four could. Four could. But six, just from the collision, there was a big gash down the side, six flooded. So we straight away, easily, straight away, you're more than what was yeah, it was the market. A, it but nobody was... thought it would be more than four. So that's why everyone thought it was so safe. Yeah, it, it was an Icarus thing. They flew. Like the, the hubris was uh, what done them in. There was a marketing brochure that said, as far as it is possible to do so, this luxury ship is designed to be unsinkable. So they sort of said it. Yeah, but I, th- I think I think everyone remembers that news line, that famous one. You must have seen it researching it. The unthinkable happens to the unsinkable. Yeah, the, they think this really came from, uh, well... Probably their own marketing, in fairness. It was, but also, I mean... Everyone, first of, all, first of all, everyone thought they were pretty damn safe. They thought they were so safe that even when the ship hit the iceberg, it was, and if you didn't know, it took four days into its journey for it to do so. Uh, and it was just 400 miles off the New York coast. And that was on April the 14th. People didn't believe they were in any trouble. So no. there wasn't like, oh my God, we've hit an iceberg, we're going to sink. It was like, oh, we'll be fine because we're on an unsinkable ship. And when word reached New York that the Titanic was in trouble, the owner of the White Star Line said, Don't worry, they will only suffer inconvenience. The boat is unsinkable. There's your PR nightmare. At that point, he said, (laughs) it's like, mate, it's already in the sea. Yeah, when when they're already in trouble, it's a bad time to make bold statements. The lookout on the ship saw the iceberg. Do you want to guess? How how long before they hit it did he see it? 30 seconds. Oh, I thought it was really long and it was just a really slow crash. No, 30 seconds before they hit it, he was like, oh my God, there's a giant iceberg. Yeah, it wasn't well lit. No, but apparently they didn't even have binoculars because there was a mix-up. So, like, well, you see, some people say it, the mix-up was that they never got loaded onto the boat. Other people say they were in a locked case. I don't believe the locked case because surely in the middle of the sea, you'd just be like, crack the fucking thing open. So I just don't believe they were on the ship. But he didn't have it. I so feel, the guy, feel sorry for the guy they, like, they doomed to be on lookout. Well, they like, don't have a permanent lookout. By the way, look out for uh, icebergs and stuff. I oh, can have the binoculars. Oh, by the way, you forgot them. <laughs> yeah. And you, we, you, we, you will be in trouble if you get this wrong. Okay. There had been six iceberg warnings that night. So that's why he was up there. Because iceberg. he was looking out for Ready. icebergs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they were only going 0. 0.5 knots slower than their 23 knots maximum speed. Now, this is where the blame comes onto the captain. Or may come onto the captain. Some say he was trying to set a record for the speed of travel, like boat travel at the time. I've heard this rumour as well. Yeah, and this was printed in New York media. So, but, but it's thought that the publisher might also have been angry with the owner of the ship because they weren't like playing ball with the press. They didn't do a lot of media before it went out. So I was like, oh. But like he knew that it was dangerous. He knew there was a lot of ice. So I don't know if he could have avoided it entirely. Might they have seen it a bit sooner and tried to get out of the way? Maybe it wouldn't have been as dramatic. Maybe they would have only hit two or three. Or four compartments and therefore not sunk. Oh well, yeah, but you, there's a lot. There's a lot of things in this. You could say if they hadn't done this, if they had done this. Well, I know, but we have to assign blame somewhere. Now there was a delay of sixty minutes after hitting the iceberg before anyone started getting into lifeboats because you know they thought they were going to be fine. Also, 
lifeboats at the time were a bit tricky, right? It sounds like they're going to be this big saving grace, but actually, if you're in treacherous waters, these little tiny ships, boats, they'd be boats, wouldn't they? Little, little wooden, wooden boats. boats. Yeah. Little wooden boats. That's all little they, wooden uh... boats. They, they simply wouldn't survive very long. Fortunately, where they were, it was actually quite calm. So you've got a while, they're just sitting around and you, you'd probably be all right for, a, for the time being. But to be honest, I mean... It's also cold as balls out yeah, there. Yeah, and like lifeboats were very much a last resort. So as they thought they were going to be okay... Well, lifeboats are always a last resort. Yeah, but like really, really, they're not this saving grace that people think. A they're lot not of time, a saving grace now, they're awful. No, exactly. And a lot of the time people get into the lifeboats thinking, oh, you know, putting them in there because they'll try and save them. However, the biggest problem, as we all know, was that there was not nearly enough took two hours, 40 minutes to sink from the time the iceberg was hit. And, um, you know, it was dark. It was really dark. Oh, yeah. It was really nighttime. dark. Nighttime. <laughs> Middle of the night. Sea is massive. Boat took on about, the, the ship, sorry, took on about 400 tonnes of water every minute until 38,000 tonnes filled the bow, lifted it up out of the water, and essentially it snapped. The film actually got most of that right, what they think happened. Bow. Oh, yeah. Bow. Oh, shall I say that again? <laughs> No, leave in your mistakes. I'm not fixing them all for you. It took on about 400 tonnes of water every minute until 38,000 tonnes filled the bow. It then lifted out of the water and essentially snapped in two parts. The film mostly got all of that right. Well, that's what they think happened to it, as best they can tell. Yeah, yeah. And obviously they have got witnesses too. Yeah, it's are, not just science. There's people that have seen it. Uh, this was the early hours of April 15th. It took five to ten minutes for the two big parts, the bow and the stern, to hit the ocean floor. That shows you how far down it went. At best, it took five minutes to get down to the bottom of the ocean. They reckon it's currently at about 12,500 feet down. We do know where it is. We've recovered about 6,000 artefacts. It sank in a really, really deep bit. Yeah, it really did. And um, it's about 400 nautical miles off the coast of Newfoundland. And they found it 37 years ago. So it's like we haven't always known where it is. We had an idea. No, it's pretty difficult to find. It's at 12,000 feet. Well, we've been through this, haven't we? How hard things are to find in the sea, even when you know where they are. <laughs> and what was most upsetting, I think, is that whilst it's travelling at about 35 miles an hour to hit the bottom and still took about five minutes, there was people on that boat. They wouldn't have been uh, conscious past a couple of minutes. No, you've got the water to contend with. And they reckon there was a lot of air pockets. So as it went down, where like it went down so quickly, so it was basically upright, the stern, and it then obviously like went straight down into the water. And obviously it hadn't, it wasn't properly full yet. So they reckon as it went down, there was a lot of air pockets in it and people, survivors in the lifeboats actually heard like lots of little explosions, what well, sounded like explosions. It wasn't where like the air pockets were filling with water. Yeah. Yeah. Gr fucking grim way to go. You'd be better off jumping into the water and hoping for the best. Now, the water was minus two degrees, so the cold killed more people than drowning because obviously if it was nice and warm, you probably could have floated for quite some time. And they all did have, there was more than enough uh, life jackets. So that would have helped you in warm water, but the cold got most of them. Yeah, it's going to. The ship was capable of carrying 64 lifeboats, which would have been enough for everyone. Uh, it was originally decided to carry just 48. This was reduced further because they thought it looked a bit cluttered on deck. I, I'm, I'm one that usually says, fuck health and safety rules. Yeah. But when there's idiots that are going to give up base for lifeboats because they're not aesthetically pleasing, I understand why we have rules. Yeah. So out of these, they had 20 boats. There was 14 standard wooden lifeboats, two wooden cutters, whatever they were, I guess, just a different shape, and four collapsible canvas ones. Now that annoyed me because if there was collapsible ones, why on earth wouldn't you have just a few more of them? So no, that at least you had something I, I like, touched out of the way. I can't anyone in the canvas ones survive. No, they did. Two of them sailed away before anyone could get in. So like, they were <laughs> like mm, hard to know if that's like a design flaw or just like bad planning at that point because they did well, load all the wooden boats I don't boats think you first. can try. You can blame anyone once the boat is sinking for making well, a little whoopsie. Yeah, yeah, it got a bit chaotic once they realised they were going to have to start putting people in lifeboats. Apparently, the first lifeboat carry, uh, which was capable of carrying sixty-five people, only took twenty-eight people, and they reckon that's because most people were still hesitant to leave the ship, thinking, "Oh, we'll be fine." You're overreacting. I don't want to go and get in a little lifeboat, which I like sort of get. I get it when you're when where you are. Yeah, 
Like if you don't think that what you're on's going to sink, and you're there asking you to get in a tiny thing, tiny thing that might sink. Like you're told is that that is such a strong ship. But out of the not even nearly enough spaces that were available on lifeboats, 472 lifeboat spaces went unused. That sucks for all the men. Yeah. Oh we yeah, get- it was mo- very, very mostly men that died. I think it's. Uh, I was going oh, yeah. to there's, there's 472 like men that could have just got on a boat. In essence, yeah. Yeah, but no. no. And women did die. You know, I'm not going to pretend it wasn't all men, but it was like heavily skewed that the men, obviously, because they were loading women and children first. That's why we have male privilege. <laughs> 832 passengers and 685 crew died. 76% of the steerage, third class, passengers died. Now, I, I'm guessing it's not because they were caged in, just because it was no. shit. They reckon that's a myth. Where I'll, I'll come to that in a minute because I just want to talk to you about the rescue quickly. Well, did then... any of them survive? Yeah. Did any of the, they, them say, I was caged in, had to get the blowtorch no. out? Well, I trust them over anyone else. Yeah. Because you would mention it. You'd be pretty pissed. Exactly. And, and I will explain it. why in a minute. I just want to talk about the rescue. So it's the SS Carpathia, which heard the SOS signal from the Titanic at 12.25 a.m. The radio operator in the Carpathia was actually due to have finished at 12 a.m. And if he had, no one would have heard the Titanic's call. He was pretty much done for the night. He was unlacing his boots and about to leave the room, getting his little bed when he heard the call. He immediately woke the captain. They turned the ship around. Three and a half hours later, 58 miles away. <laughs> It sounds madness, doesn't it? But that's just how long it took. Three and a half hours later, the Titanic was like long on the bottom of the sea, but it managed to pull all the lifeboards aboard and it saved all the people in the life in the lifeboats. And uh, out of the nine it pulled out of the sea, three survived. Hooray. Uh, one last thing to note on lifeboats is that the crew or the, the people were loading the last lifeboat when the Titanic finally sank. So even if they had have had enough for everyone, they might not have had time to launch them all anyway. Because this wasn't like a straight forward thing. It took about 10 minutes usually to get everyone in a boat and get it ready yeah, to sail. Yeah, but if you'd started an hour well, earlier. Well, yeah. Yeah, there is that. A little bit more urgency about it. Um, so addressing your idea that the third class passengers had been locked away. And it's not, not my allowed. idea. No, it's not your idea. It's a very common idea. It's one that you've just mentioned, though. It is very common and it even is shown in the film. It's not uh, to say that they were locked away and not allowed on the lifeboats. It wasn't them that wasn't allowed on the lifeboats. People did make it onto the lifeboats from third class. Uh, to be honest, I think it got to a certain point. They just stopped caring and let anybody get on the lifeboats just so they were full and leaving. But they hadn't been locked in. Survivors themselves in the inquiry and, and interviewed afterwards would say that any gates or doors were open so none of them were locked all of them apparently none of them locked very securely ever anyway they all just like basically were like little things that slid across to stop you from getting into second class it was more of a suggestion than a thing so they could have forced it open if they'd have been locked however apparently none of them were locked the only one that was was like a tiny little one up on deck which was knee height so after you know they rattled it a couple of times and then just climbed over it so it wasn't like an issue they reckon that most of them were lost and confused because you're so far. It's it's easy to not well, think about well, yeah, how far not, down on this ship you I mean, are. The ship's not flat anymore. No, I mean obviously the bottom is flooding first, so a lot of them notice water coming in. Apparently, a lot of them packed up their stuff and just stood outside their room waiting for instruction for a while. This is why like never be that person. No, run. <laughs> never wait for instruction when there's water around your feet. Yeah. And when help never came, obviously they then tried to get up, but it's a, it was a very confusing, there was no map. There was no arrows telling you where to go. Same. Yeah, and it really looked the same in a boat. So a lot of people just never made it for all the way from the bottom of the boat up to the top, either before the water came in or they ran the wrong way and water was already there. Or by the time they got up, they, was still, they still had to make it to the actual deck where the lifeboats were. And it was, it, honestly, they think it was mostly just down to confusion and where you happen to be. And of course, most of them were in bed because it was one o'clock in the morning. So it's horrible. But it doesn't. It, it, to be honest, it seems like a bit of a myth. No one was really locked in their room. Some people gave up and went to their room and chose to die there. Well, yeah, some people went 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 out fucking. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you tell me that the myth about the band playing on is also, I mean, I'm <laughs> going gonna, gonna to throw my microphone because that is too cool. I I don't know. There was a woman playing the piano. That's a lot of witnesses say that. So that's I guess close enough. Mm, okay. <laughs> right, so let's get into some conspiracy theories about the Titanic. Let's start with the Californian. Oh, you mean the boat that was could have helped it way earlier? Yeah. 
and didn't. Yeah. Okay, so let's, all right. So there was another ship nearby that gets sort of spoken about as A, a bit of a mystery as to why it didn't try and help, and B, was it really as close as people say it was? It was the SS Californian, and it was it had stopped on the edge of the ice field following all the iceberg warnings that we knew, yeah, even the Titanic had heard, they'd noted that down. People on the ship acknowledge, this is people on the Titanic, acknowledge seeing another ship a couple of times, and then people on the Californian also acknowledge seeing another ship. Apparently this ship, which we now know is the Titanic, the people on the Californian could stop being able to see it at around 3am and thought it had just sailed away. No, no, mate, it sunk. <laughs> the Californian was believed to be about five to six miles away and survivors of the Titanic agree with it and basically say they could see it. How the fuck do you see five to six miles away? Even at sea, in the dark. No obstruction. Really? And, and it's dark. And how so are you light. judging that it's five or six miles away? That's mental. Oh, I've, I never trust when people say how far. Like I said, I can't, I can't even judge how far. No. I don't suppose it matters. The fact is they could see it, so... Um, and this is what they got in trouble for. Well, I say trouble. They didn't really. They got spoke about. Because there were people aboard the Californian who saw rockets fired from the Titanic as a distress signal. Apparently there's like the order in which you fire them and like how you fire them is the difference between distress. So it's it's a very big no-no to like fire them in this distress pattern if you're not actually in distress. And also the Titanic had Morse lamps which flickered as a distress signal. So if you couldn't like hear any, you know, if you had no radio or whatever, you might be able to see it. These were these things were both seen by people on the uh, on the Californian. Well, the radio operator of the Californian was in bed, and nobody bothered to wake him up to try and make contact to say, "Are you okay? Is this a distress signal?" Or listen to the radio. None of that. Apparently, at one point, one of the staff on the Californian, and this is the bit to me that I think bothers me. The rest of it, you sort of like, okay, fine, it's the middle of the night, maybe you're not paying attention, whatever. The staff on the Californian that actually remarked that the boat in the distance appeared to be queer with some of it out of the water so basically you're looking at it up in the air and it's well, about how to how much sink. of that can you tell from five miles away well they could see the boat from five miles away anyway but they still didn't get the radio operator even if he had seen it realized they were in distress and tried to help you have to wonder and there are many theories to suggest that maybe he would have been able to save a few more maybe he wouldn't it was going to be fucking chaos if he went over there right at that. By the time he got there, if he'd have gone when he saw the rockets and fired up his... Because remember, his engines are cold. They've stopped for the night. So he hadn't got coal in his engines or anything. It probably would have taken him about an hour to get ready. So you're looking at a couple of hours still. Yes, you would have got there before the Californian. But at what state? And it would have been carnage. You have to make it apparently like, you know, you really have to plan what you would do in that sort of rescue. It was different for the Carpathian. They were a much bigger ship with a much bigger crew. And that was a rescue mission. The ship was already down. To to go over there mid journey, they could have just sailed through a bunch. Like can't see shit. They could have run over a bunch of people. He was used as a scapegoat because the 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 people who made the Titanic what didn't want any culpability, and they didn't even blaming their captain would have made like been their fault. So they were trying to make everyone else around them look bad for not helping. Well, the Californian did send out warnings about the amount of ice when it stopped. The Titanic uh, radio operator actually heard these, and by the third time he heard it, he actually replied to say, shut up, shut up, I'm working. Well, then fuck them. Yeah, right. Um, so I wonder why the Titanic didn't get yeah. any help. Like Maybe the radio operator was like, I'm not getting back up for you. You can fire all your rockets you want. I tried to help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, are they in trouble in the ice field we warned them about? Fuck them. At about half four, five a.m., the crew were up and discussing what they'd all seen the night before. And finally, they decide maybe it's worth ra- waking up the radio operator to see what's going on. He then learns what happened. They do arrive at the scene, but the Carpathia is already there and has already got all the boats on board. Uh, the California does offer to take some of the rescued people, but the captain's like, nah, I'm, I've done it, I'm off. Um, but he does ask them to stick around and look for any survivors in the water, which they do, but they don't find any. Okay, so what if... The Titanic never sank. What are we found at the bottom of the fucking ocean then? Okay, yeah, I mean, we know a boat sank. Uh, oh, oh, this is the <laughs> the Titanic's the Titanic sister ship theory. Yeah, sister ship, RMS Olympic, that was very, very similar, but some think it was deemed too damaged to be profitable and that maybe it was crashed or scuttled on purpose to claim on the insurance money that the Titanic would have gotten. But... Surely then I thought, well, it must have been known that people would die and, like, what's the point in that? Because you could just scuttle it. But then some people say that maybe they planned to let everyone off in New York and scuttle it, like, on the way back or at some point, that they didn't actually mean to kill everyone or that they thought they could keep it afloat for long enough for someone to come and rescue them. And maybe that's why they stayed so close to the Californian because they thought, we'll get help and we're not actually really going to sink and they could claim on the insurance. Well, um, it's possible, but there's no evidence for this. They're always, like, they're, they're Some all, people reckon there is. Some like, reckon there isn't. Yeah, there's a lot of reckoning. 
I mean, a guy wrote a book on it. He's pretty sure. But there has been numerous expeditions to the wreckage site. And this this is the problem for me. Like some of the stuff they found, it has Titanic numbers on it. So what, are they just planting that there? Because it was such a tragedy, it's easy to think of the owners as evil people that would do even more evil than they'd already done. Well, not that they, they did that particularly evil. They just badly marketed something. But you think of them as bad because the sink the ship sunk so why not make it them even more bad because they've already done a bad thing so why couldn't they have done another bad thing well the but guy th- who wrote the book i don't really care who, 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 who wrote a book he says that photos of the wreckage show the portholes are, that are unevenly spaced and yet a photo of the titanic shows that hers were evenly spaced could be with the proportions of the photo uh there is a photo that i'm going to put on the blog this week that explains it and that makes it look fairly conclusive but like you say we're basing this on a ship that's been underwater for 100 years. They hit an iceberg and split in half. Yeah. Uh, but it do, they do look different. I mean, like, if you look at the photo, you think, shit, yeah, like, that's a different yeah, ship. Could, the, fo- the other photo could be mislabeled as the Titanic and actually be a sister ship, Titanic 2. Who's going to get on the Titanic 2? Just a, a side note for a second. Like, people have, like, put that forward before, but, like, who the fuck is going to get on a boat named Titanic? Or anything to do with it, like right? a memorial <laughs> or anything. Like, no, it's not going to happen. Others suggest that maybe the tragedy was intended to kill three powerful businessmen who allegedly opposed the creation of a banking system, which is now the US uh, Federal Reserve. This was Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, and John Jacob Astor. Now, this was stupid, in my opinion, because it's much easier to get away with murder in 1912. Like, surely you would just stab them or shoot them or... No, hire no. an assassin. Why would you put them on a ship? And there's no guarantee that they would have sunk. They did, but there's no, there was no guarantee of that. No, and you, there's, there's no evidence of anything other than the boat hitting a fucking iceberg. And it was insured for five million. And, and let's not forget, there's witness, there's build. live witnesses. There's not like a plane that's gone down where no one can actually say, "I heard a bomb go off." That if this was sabotage, someone would have known about it. And to, to pull it off at the, in 1912, someone would have had to have been on that boat to do it. So to talk about, like, piss on your own ships, I'm going to blow mm. this person. Like, is the, what, is this suicide sinking? That's the problem I have with, with a lot of conspiracy theories. It relies on multiple people keeping secrets, which on the whole, humans are not very good at. I just, I just yeah, I just think it's it, because it's somewhat mysterious, because they like, labelled it unsinkable, I think people are jumping a lot. I don't, I don't think there's any necessity for these conspiracy theories personally. There are a number of eyewitnesses who remember things where they shouldn't have been, but like this was a long time ago and you've just been through a horrible trauma. So I just I just don't really put a lot into this one. I, I just think it's a terrible conspiracy theory. You wouldn't have made enough money from the insurance. You couldn't have killed anyone that way. I don't see why you would swap the boats. You'd send out your nice, like, I don't see why you'd do it in such a costly manner. Yeah. You'd, you'd find a cheaper way to sink the boat. You'd find a way that didn't cost so many lives as well. It is an interesting theory, and I'll put a picture on the blog, which does make you think about it, but then also you just look at the other side of it, and it's just really hard to get on board with. But what about sabotage? Mm, how? Well, it took millions of rivets to build the Titanic, and supposedly cost was no problem, but some people think that cheap rivets were used, and they got brittle in the freezing water. Well, that's and not therefore, sabotage. the safety features failed because That's not sabotage. That they built it on purpose with poor parts. Well, yeah, but that's not sabotage because they were building it with poor parts, hoping it would work. Sabotage is when someone kind of goes like, hey, 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 I'm going to put these bolts in and sink this ship. Well, see? maybe it was the Catholics. No, it wasn't the Catholics. Because the hull number is 3909 space 04, which supposedly, and sort of does, read as no Pope if you read it backwards. But the shipbuilding company... Right, you can get the fuck out of there. <laughs> it does. This ship was built though. in Belfast. Uh, yeah, where well, they're all Protestant. No, they're not. No, sorry, not Belfast, but the company that built the ships, he made a point of only hiring Protestants. He made like a big marketing thing about the fact that we only hire Protestants at this time. I company. used to date someone whose granddad built one, built the Titanic. Really? You yeah. bring this up now? Oh, I don't suppose he's still alive. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. It was well over 15 years ago. Yeah, but he would have been really old 15 yeah, yeah. years ago. So he probably almost definitely is Yeah, he was, he was very Protestant. Yeah. So Scary Protestant as well. <laughs> but apparently this made the Catholics even angrier. So. I mean, they're angry. Maybe they like. In 1912, they were Sabotage the shit. No, I don't think like no Pope is really going to trigger them that badly. 
I think we're really reaching now. There's like one plausible conspiracy theory that they might have done it for the insurance money, which I, we can't really prove or disprove. Okay, well, I have two more and a point. Well, okay. One of them's going to be aliens and it's not. No, not quite. But um, the next one is German U-boat torpedoed the Titanic. No. Because a number of survivors reported seeing an unknown vessel five or six miles away. However, I suspect that's probably just the Californian. U-boats were quite small and designed not to be seen. I doubt that mm. from five miles away you're going to be like... Some say they saw a searchlight after the Titanic had sunk, but no one came to rescue them. A number of survivors, survivors claim they heard an explosion. Now, they think this could have been a sub from a submarine. However, it's probably just you don't really know what the sound of an iceberg hitting your ship that sounds, sounds like. fucking horrific. So I think you could probably And also bits that. of it will start exploding and yeah. like things will start failing. And So depending on where you were, were in the ship, yeah, you could probably believe that you were under So what? No one, they never even claimed it or like it never really added to anything. Well, others say that it might have been from a fire because coal is known to spontaneously combust. I think that's kind of how it works. <laughs> I was going to, this is known to combust, not spontaneously. <laughs> um, but it's somewhat Oh, Otherwise, coal mines would be fucking way more dangerous than they are. And this was quite dangerous, to be fair. The people dealing with the coal in this ship. Oh, yeah, but it doesn't spontaneously combust. But there, there you, was believed to be a small fire that was, like, under control the whole time. That they yeah, had, like that a small they hadn't coal been able fire. to put out. Oh, yeah, because you, you, your fuel on. is on fire, so it's got yeah. infinite fuel. But they thought an explosion then might have weakened the ship and therefore it couldn't survive when it hit the iceberg or there was no iceberg at all. It was just taken on water from this they're all semantics out though, aren't they? Like, well, also it was a time of peace, nineteen twelve. Like, we weren't at war with anyone, not not particularly. Taking the U boat out of it, like, isn't oh the 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 sink set on fire and the, the hole was weak and then we hit an iceberg? Isn't that all semantics to that ends with we hit an iceberg? That ends with there was a hole in our ship and we sank. Yeah, yeah. So this is like these little ones are like is so. Yeah, and I think the issue is that so we've what? never been even able if to someone, get it up even to if that weird it. series of it, like even if there was an explosion that weakened the hull, and then that then they crashed that bit of the hull into an iceberg. So what? And finally, the reason I don't believe that one is because uh, submarines at the time couldn't actually travel that far. <laughs> No. So it would have had to have another ship nearby that it was like getting in and out of. I don't even think, did Germany even have U-boats during 1912? Yes, apparently they did, but they it was unlikely they were attacking Not an American. Not the U-boats from World War II that could like... No, no, I don't think they were like, quite the same. Like parked up outside New York. No. <laughs> okay, here's a fun one. My last one before I just have a couple of points to make. What about a mummy's curse? It was a transporting thing, wasn't it? It was said to have, but there was actually no evidence that it was. However, an author in London at the time was claiming a cursed Egyptian mummy was causing death and disaster in London. He repeated this claim over and over following the Titanic disaster because he'd also been talking about it before. The mummy had been brought to the British Museum in 1889 and he'd basically been rambling on about it ever since. However, it wasn't actually a mummy. It was a casket that was painted to look like a mummy. So he was, he was entirely wrong about what was inside. Do you know um, that on the website for the British Museum, there's a page for contested items? <laughs> That's weird. Which has its whole like whole section for like, Egypt where we've just wow. stolen a load of shit and they oh. just flaunt. It. Whatever. Anyway, um, what's weird about this one, though, is not so much that I think a mummy cursed it in that sense. He did uh, write a book 14 years before the Titanic about a boat that didn't have enough lifeboats, hit an iceberg and sank called the Titan. That is a hell of a quinky dink. Isn't it? Maybe it was him. Maybe we're looking in all the wrong places. Yeah, he's just trying to sell his book. <laughs> And the final point I want to make is about Freemasons, um, because it's not so much a conspiracy, so much as uh, more so about the kind of inquiry itself afterwards, because there were sort of, well, there were a lot of people involved that got away with it, essentially. So like the captain, I mean, even though he went down with the ship, he, he was absolved. you could still place blame on him, even in so, death. You all blame in death. <laughs> I think, like, good that he died. But because... instead... He was exonerated. Well, the inquiry exonerated him, saying that most other ships at the time sped through ice at full speed with no serious consequences, which is just not true. Um, the Titanic was going exceptionally fast and there'd been warnings and other boats had either avoided the area, slowed down or stopped for the night. They had no binoculars. The person heading the inquiry was John Charles Bigham, who was a Freemason, the president of the Board of Trade, two of the naval assessors and a senior engineer assessor was a Freemason, were all Freemasons, the chairman of Harland and Wolfe, 
which was the shipyard in Belfast who built the ship, was believed to have been a Freemason. Oh, yeah, well, everyone was a Freemason. Though. So it's like if they wanted to cover up something or just protect their people, then like they could have and they did. Maybe, but I what do they think were covering at the up time, remains a mystery. You've got a group of people that are at a certain level, they're going to be members of the Freemasons. I don't, it's not this. Yeah, but are they just protecting each other mean because they're, they're Freemasons? Doesn't or are they, is there friends. something bigger? Doesn't mean they're friends or know each other or would go to any of these links to protect one another. But maybe they did. Only if it brought the Freemasons into disrepute, which it didn't because they didn't make the ship out of stone, did they? What, if anything, of all of this do you think is most likely or possible? It's possible that, I mean, when you use the word possible, most of them are possible, but likely, I mean, is, they could be an insurance scam. That's highly likely. It'd be gross, but I they wouldn't put it. They didn't make enough money back, though. Yeah, but if it was that or no money, fuck it. Because they've still got the Titanic in their hand, just relabeled. So it's like nice. free money, isn't it? It's not like they sank both the ships. They only got rid of the one that was shit. Well, there's a lot of talk about exploring certain parts of the wreckage because they haven't explored it all. Well, no, it's at 12,000 feet. It's right pain in the ass. Uh, and they've never found any human remains. Not surprising. Apparently it is a little bit surprising because there's no current where the ship currently is. is the and shit's there's shit's on wild oxygen, life. And it remains have been found on ships much older than the Titanic. So given how many people died, you would at the very least expect some bones. But there is a couple of areas that they haven't explored within the wreckage. And they think this is most likely to be where people are and people are worried that it's disrespectful. I disagree because if you find bones or human body, body parts, get them up and bury them with the other victims. Surely that's better. Go I, know, you might I think it's interesting. Them and stir up some sort of haunted ghost ship type shenanigans. Yeah, but I'm not going down there. I'm not I don't even like the sea. True. So <laughs> There is also a video of the captain doing his final checks of the ship before it's maiden voyage. And I was a bit surprised. Who knew we had video in 1912? Yeah, he looks like Captain Birds. <laughs> um, but I'll put a link to it on the blog this week. But yeah, I mean, final thoughts about the Titanic. I, I'll be honest. It sunk. There's a lot of weird shit that went on and a lot of people made mistakes, mainly the captain. But I don't think there's much. Right. I mean, I just think they hit an iceberg. Yeah, there's incompetence. I, think, I don't think you need anything more. I do think the pictures of it being the other ship are com somewhat compelling, but there's just too much the other side. Like, I've, oh, I've been talked into science. You can find our blog at mysteryoflifepodcast.co.uk or you can follow us on Instagram at the Mystery of Life Pod. And we'll be back on Patreon next week. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>